major means of transportation in Cameroon. Mr. Discuss safety and security problems for teens to travel in Europe. The fifth one. This is the 10 strategies for traffic safety in Cameroon. And this last one. Be familiar with USG's foreign policy on traveling in Cameroon. Thank you. Okay. We are going to start with an activity and that will be to share as a uh, one that we share experiences. The other day when we uh, were meeting with the officials, a good number of you guys said we visited Africa before. I would like that you share the experiences that you had when you visited the country. Those African countries. Can you tell us the country that you visited and you give us your impression. Um, well, I was in Senegal traveling in a taxi in the eastern area, um, and uh, we were driving. There was a bunch of goats passing the road, and uh, the driver didn't slow down. Just sort of the technique is you sort of slow down, but you really just sort of try to find your way through them. And uh, we kind of did the, you know, when you, you, you get to a person, you're, you're, like, you're like passing a person. You go left, they go left. Yeah. Right. We kind of did that with a goat for a minute, and <laughs> we, we hit it, and the car was, uh, well, the goat would die, but um, uh, we, anyway, the car like limped into a village, and um, we had to like wait on the side of the road for about two and a half hours while they fixed it with like super glue and um, <laughs> other other things. Um, uh, anyway, actually I saw, that was actually Peace Corps Volunteers Village of all things. Uh, that was a nice coincidence. But anyway, um, it was a big inconvenience. I lost like a day or two of travel because of it. And um, it uh, was a kind of traumatic experience actually seeing me go. But anyway. <laughs> um, well, thank you. You okay, sir? Can I ask one question? Yeah, what did you learn, Sebastian? Well, you just have to put, you, you really have to, um, you have to plan for these kinds of things. You know, like, I, if I was planning on getting to Ziegenshire in the, in the West in a day, I really had to adjust, and, you know, I got there three days after I thought I was going to get there. Um, so, you, I mean, you have to, you really have to be flexible, you have to plan for it, you have to try to plan for it as much as you can, and, uh, you know, just kind of take it as it comes because it's unpredictable. Thank you. Who else wants to share his life No one can tell the story. I know you guys. You say you like to hear from you. What do you think? What were your impressions? We can share an experience. Okay. Yeah. For, from uh, a stagiaire that was in our, in our stage, she was traveling and there was a goat on the top of the, the bush taxi. A lot. A yeah. lot of goat. And it, it's traveling. How did it work? Was there like a hole in the, in the bush taxi? No, it was driving. They were driving and the windows were down and the goat peed. Oh. And, uh, oh. peed oh. and she's yeah. sitting next to the window. It, like, Yeah, no, no, no. That was I mean, most people have already heard this story, but uh, a few days ago I was in the shower 
And I guess I was kind of like just in the zone, like I'd finally gotten used to taking the cold showers and stuff. And I'm kind of halfway through, and uh, I shake my head to get some water out, and uh, I hear like, <laughs> and, and like behind the toilet, there's like a chick, a chicken, and it's three like chicks just like rocking out, and uh, that was kind of bizarre. And I kind of told my family, and they kind of laughed. They they said that that's there. It's usually in there when it's raining out and stuff. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> not a good one. So I'm sorry if I killed him. Um, as I think most of you already know, because I've lived in Egypt for a long time, I was used to the mode of crossing the street. And the way you do it is you walk far away, you put a by people falling. I think I got just stupid one day and didn't really bother too much back because I you know I trusted the system works just fine so I didn't take extra precautions and I was crossing the street and along from the bus and yeah <laughs> bad experience so wow. so be so be extra careful don't think that just because you've been here long enough you know this this system and you're you're comfortable enough to do it without taking precautions because uh, yeah I can tell you from experience. You probably aren't. You probably aren't that ready to to get along without taking precautions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, here too, the pedestrian doesn't have the right of way at all. Yeah. I just noticed there's a lot of just like things that um, like no safety precautions in a lot of um, in a lot of countries like. Um, but this hardly ever in the seatbelts. Um, when, when I was in Japan, when we would take um, the bus, the bus would never stop at the bus stop. It would just the, the doors would just always be open, and if you see your bus stop, you just gotta get next to the door and jump out. When, when you see your bus stop, it doesn't stop for you. Well, like it's dangerous, I guess, if you're if you've never done it before. But people get used to it and they just learn how to land. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, when I was living in Haiti, I would take the tap tap, which is the equivalent of kind of a bus taxi, and you jump in the back, and then when you want to get out, you go tap tap, and they let you out. And one time I was sitting in the back, back, and it was a particularly gross one. It just fumes, fumes, fumes everywhere. Um, by the time I got up to where I was going, I had to blow my nose. So I remember I blow my nose, and I look at the Kleenex, and like, where the Kleenex had touched my face it was black. From the exhaust, so <laughs> kind of gross, but I, I, I have a question for everybody. You've been here for over 10 days. What are some of the things that you've observed in the area of transportation that you would never have imagined in the state? I'm just, uh, I've described it to my family back home. It's like, a, well, there's a, it's like a, there's a small circle track at, at like far, maybe 40 minutes from my house. And I say it's like the Barberton Speedway, but with that twice as many people trying to cross it at the same time, like, it's just insane. <laughs> like, if you were out crossing, like, the Daytona 500, like, <laughs> that's, that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> 